Hey guys, welcome back. Today is the day we start the plumbing. And I've been nervous about this day for a while. So let's get into it. We'll show you the string lines that we've got set up. We've got four string lines that are just crossing over the house completely. These represent two different walls. The walls do not go all the way across like this. We just did that because it was easier to lay out that way. So this wall that I'm walking over here actually starts here. This is a laundry room wall. So this is the laundry room. And this set of string lines actually starts somewhere around here. And this set of strings represent the wall for the two bathrooms that are going here, a hall bath and the master bath. So the plumbing from both of those are going to be sharing this wall. And did I mention I'm really nervous about this? I am not a plumber. I know that the probably the most important thing is our slope of the pipe needs to be, I think, pretty spot on. I believe it's around a quarter inch per foot that your pipe, sewage pipe, has to drop as it makes its way to the septic tank. So that part's got me a little feeling uneasy, I guess, because you not only have to do that, but you have to have them pipes coming up exactly, almost exactly, where you need them to in your house. So, stick around. It's gonna be interesting. I think I'm gonna start by laying out where each pipe is gonna come up with a little bit of spray paint. Eventually, I just I'm laying it out to see how far we can be working. So after scratching our heads a lot and reading and studying and becoming master plumbers, we think we got it laid out. We got it laid out how we want how we think it should go and basically all that's left to do here is to spray some lines on the ground for our trenches you'll see that we have a four inch this is a four inch pipe that's our main line that goes all the way through the house and we're going to branch off from that to hit all of our plumbing fixtures so before we go and paint those lines down and start digging those trenches we actually want to get a little more prepared and screen some dirt. We need good clean dirt for the install of this pipe. As we're putting it in, we're going to use that to kind of hold it in place and whatnot. You guys that have been here for a while have seen the pain that we go through when we screen dirt. We're going to do it much differently and more efficiently now. I picked up a nice, a good score from the scrap yard, some expanded metal. We're going to make a quick screen out of that and clean some dirt up and get a pile of that going so I'll take you over to there and show you what that's gonna look like
All right, here's our new screen for screening our dirt to get good, clean fill dirt. The idea is to just use the backhoe, or we could even use shovels if we wanted to, put the dirt on top of here, move it around with a shovel, and then pick this up and dump off the big stuff. Do it again. Before, we were doing it with this. This is some more expanded metal. It's actually two layers welded together. Works good for small projects, really small. We used it on a really big project though, long time ago for our trenches here. Not fun, not doing this anymore. <laughs> so let's go ahead, take this over to our dirt pile and try it out. All right, so that's one load, and we only showed you guys one scoop. It actually took several small scoops from the backhoe because we didn't want to have a big heaping pile. But while I was doing that, I had this idea, and a while back, someone said that I should make a grizzly for the backhoe. Now, a full-scale grizzly is, it's a little much. Uh, I don't have the material for it, so I'd have to get material, and it would take a lot of time that is precious right now to, to build it. But I had this idea while I was doing this to make this into a miniature grizzly for this trailer specifically. And basically we would add four legs to this thing, two short ones over here and two long ones over here to have this sit in the trailer at some sort of angle like that and I could slowly dump near the top the material. And the idea is the big stuff would roll off and the finds would go through into the trailer. There'd probably still have to be someone here with a shovel to make sure things go smoothly, but that's an even faster way than doing it like this. And this is a faster way than doing it with our bucket. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna stop and it won't take long. I will make this into a miniature four-wheeler trailer grizzly. the grizzly is done really quick project just took some scrap pieces of metal and stuck them together so 
some features of this Grizzly. The gate opens while the Grizzly can still be on. And we can dump the trailer also with the Grizzly still on. Because up here I got a piece of angle iron right here and then a little four inch piece of angle iron that goes over that way and one over here to help hold it on when we go to dump it. It stays on. That looked pretty good. It did look good. That was impressive. What if you just like throw it at it, you know, instead of, instead of, yeah. Oh yeah. Still works. That worked great. Oh. Pretty satisfying. That is very satisfying. <laughs> I like it. Other than I, I wish we did this a long time ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Like, I, I originally thought you would kind of have to be here with the shovel, and as I'm dumping it, maybe help stuff me off the screen. But nothing stuck. It just all went. Yep. Worked awesome. No, the only shoveling you, you did was you kind of moved the pile to the front of the trailer. Yeah. That's it. One time. Eli's gonna give it a try. Did you get some dirt? Material here for the four wheeler trailer, and instead of just dumping it and driving away, I'm kind of shoveling it in to make a tall pile so it doesn't take up as much space and so it doesn't get wasted. The four wheeler trailer Rock Grizzly worked amazing. Um, wish I would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> This will go around the pipe to keep it nice and safe so there's not any rocks up against it. So I'm going to unload this here. And then we got one more thing. It's probably going to take a couple days. But we're going to get it done in this video. We got one more thing to do. We got to go put up a fence. So the chicken coop is done and what we want to do now is fence in a little area for the chickens to scratch around and 
roam around in. We don't want to let them uh, free range, at least not for now. We do live pretty much in the middle of nowhere. There's lots of coyotes out here. So we've got some fencing here that the previous owner of the land had set up on another part of the property that we're not using. So we uh, took some of it down and now we're gonna use it to fence in a little grove of trees here for the chickens so that they can safely be outside. And to be honest, my main concern isn't so much the coyotes, it's really our own animals like Barkley, the dog. He has shown a little too much interest in the chickens. So over time, I think he'll understand that they're not food, they're friends. <laughs> The cats, however, they've shown a little more fear of the chickens for some reason. I thought I thought they would be our number one worry, and maybe they still are. But I think as the chicks get bigger, the cats will just leave them alone. So let's uh, start putting this in. It will have a gate, and it's not going to be the sturdiest fencing in the world. We just kind of want to get this up real quick, and... If need be, over time, we'll reinforce it as needed. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, want to see it now. and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Got lucky perfect that's two rolls of fencing that we got from uh, previous landowners and that one just makes it that's awesome so for the last part 
of enclosing the chicken run. We need to close up underneath here. That's the that's it. And uh, the quickest way to get it to match the coop versus, you know, rather than doing it with black paint is with this. My new favorite toy. <laughs> So the one reason I want to go with enclosing the two bottom sides here with OSB is it's going to help keep the wind out from underneath. And also that includes wind driven rain or snow. And the plan is to eventually have their food and water outside underneath the coop where it can be protected from the weather with OSB. Do you want to try this? Sure. You've never... You and the, Logan are the only ones that haven't tried it. We have had a busy and productive week this week. We finished getting this fence up so the chickens can roam around and they are safe and secure from any wild animals or from our own cats and dog from getting them. Gives us a lot of peace of mind having this up and them having their own space. Um, as you can see, the T posts are a little bit taller than the fence, so in the future we can add barbed wire to the top if we feel there is a need for that or make any other changes as we see they're needed. Over at the house, we got our sewage pipes all laid out and ready to go. We got that filter all screened. So next week, we're ready to rock and roll. We're going to dig trenches. We can get those pipes in the ground. We're ready to go. Thanks for following along on our journey, and we will see you next week.